the war might not be over. India has heightened security measures in border states after Pakistan launched drone and missile attacks on Jammu, Punjab, Gujarat and Rajasthan. Hamari behno betiyo ke mathe se sindur hatane ka anjam kya hota hai? India has opened three gates of the Salal Dam in Jammu and Kashmir's Riyasi. The ceasefire is in place, but the incident which happened in the last 20 days signifies the role each of us have to play when it comes to national defense of our country. So no matter which country you are watching this from, this video is going to be relevant for you. But for all the Indians out there, we'll first do a small analysis of what happened and then we'll jump into how can you as a biotech professional contribute towards the defense of our country, the bio-defense of our country and also get jobs in government as well as private sector and possibly start your own bio-defense company. So this video is going to give you a million dollar idea. So stay tuned and let's get started. Now to start with, what happened in the last 20 days is really upsetting for all the Indians. 26 tourists were killed in plain sight, in broad daylight by terrorists. Now, these terrorists walked in from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and followed by that, we know the mayhem which happened. The Modi government responded swiftly and within 10 days, they waged a war against the terrorists. They were shot at, they were hunted and when we found that where exactly all these terrorists are holed up, our country released some lethal missiles to destroy the targets. But this also escalated quickly into a full-scale war with India and Pakistan. Pakistan sent across 600 plus drones and India responded by neutralizing them and also attacking the Pakistan's military establishment. Well, these were all about bombs, these were all about missiles, this story was all about honor and this story was all about uniting, coming together to fight for the country. But now that all my dear friends, all my dear Indians are united, this video is to talk about how can you, using your skill set, play a significant important role when it comes to the bio-defense of our country. Now, I'm not scared of Pakistan and I'm not scared of the terrorists. But one thing I know is you have to sweat in the peace so that you don't bleed in the battle. So we will have to sweat it out while the peace exists. And that is, these terrorists, if you, if you ob observe what happened with those 26 tourists, these terrorists had no ethics. They plain and simple as the religion and, uh, you know, killed. Now the point here is, terrorists don't have ethics, T terrorists don't have morality, terrorists don't have a religion. They are here to create some kind of disharmony among all of us. In the meantime, if terrorists don't have any ethics, terrorists don't have a religion, terrorists don't have morality, then it is highly likely that the day they get hold of the kind of weapons, bio-weapons, which uh, the world is, has seen in the past also, for example, anthrax, the truth is our country, our countrymen, our army may not be safe. In today's video, we are not just going to talk about bio-defense and bio-warfare, but also bio-protection. Also, you have to understand that war is the biggest business in any of the world's countries. For example, when the India-Pakistan war happened, China started uh, advertising that, hey, look at my military might. Um, these planes uh, which I have given to Pakistan are doing a great job, so buy more planes for me. So basically, when two cats fight, the monkey gets the benefit. That's exactly what happened here. So what will happen is, suppose somebody sells out some kind of a uh, bio weapon or some kind of toxin or uh, virus to these terrorists god forbid if something like covid happens imagine what will happen to all of us right so it is very important to post in the post covid era to talk about what exactly we should be doing as bio professionals so let us start today by talking about bio defense and bio security so the first problem which uh, any country in the world will face is detecting the bioweapon even before it has been used or even before it has spread. So for example, development of rapid diagnostic kits and biosensors to detect biowarfare agents like anthrax, smallpox, 
or botulinum toxin. Now, these are just small ones. It can be COVID, it can be any coronavirus which can be spread into the air. So basically, any kind of bio threat has to be countered even before it has spread. So we have to detect and we have to counter. So that is where genomic surveillance and environmental biosensors are required to detect pathogen release in real time. And we have to keep an eye on uh, the, because we are talking about one health, maybe these viruses will also impact the animal population. So suddenly if the animal population starts dying in one part of our country, we have to take notice. Is it bio warfare? So uh, again, the moment we have done the rapid diagnosis, now the thing is how to develop the vaccines fast. So that is where we have to develop our mRNA mite so that we can develop mRNA vaccines faster. So we have to create quick response platforms for producing vaccines and countermeasures against engineered or naturally emerging biological threat. So this is very, very important to save the lives of our countrymen because if a drone is coming, I can see, but if a virus is coming, I cannot see. Even if any of our water bodies or any of our uh, crowded areas are, uh, you know, injected with these kind of uh, pathogens that can be lethal and we know uh, outright that India is a crowded country we have so many people so the the number of people who will die will be huge and our healthcare system may not be able to sustain it so that is where the next thing will be uh, to understand okay uh, this is bio defense and bio warfare but another aspect where you can contribute in fact one of my very old friend and very good friend of mine he, he owns a company called as Fibroheal and he has been covered by Times of India also because his uh, silk protein powered healing materials or healing bands are now going to the soldiers so that if they are injured they can heal faster and that brings me to the next point today and that is combating uh, the injury so medical support for example regenerative medicine so people who are uh, interested in stem cell research for example um, if you do your research at MIRM Manipal Institute of Regenerative Medicine and if you do your bachelor's or master's there and then you can get a job easily in DRDO in the stem cell and regenerative therapies uh, division so you can develop stem cell therapy you can develop tissue engineering skin grafts and 3D bioprinting for ba battlefield so soldiers injury recovery so that's one again one direction in which you can go as a biotech professional now moving forward you can also create smart bandages just like fibro hill has created or contribute to the nation by joining fibro hill actually and then these bandages can release antibiotics track healing and change the color when uh, infected so you know so that the soldier can remove the bandage when he feels it is infected so all this and again portable diagnostic devices because what's happening is if a, a soldier is injured in the battlefield he has to be carried to the uh, hospital what if we could create mobile hospitals lab on chip tools to diagnose infections and injuries in real time right inside the battlefield so again all of this requires innovation which you can do as a biotech professional now moving forward again uh, you must have observed that our soldiers morale is everything so what if we could create some drugs or some medicines which will improve the cognitive uh, enhancement or and the morale of the uh, soldiers of so maybe nootropics or gene therapies to improve alertness memory decision making skills to soldiers that is something we can create that kind of products we can create or research can be done again uh, soldiers get tired after eight hours or nine hours hours of duty what if we could create uh, biosensors to track the fatigue and uh, stress levels of the soldiers so that we can replace them quickly and ask them to take rest while the next shift um, person takes over. So this is where neuroscience and soldier performance uh, innovation can be done by biotech professionals just like you. Now moving forward you can also get into bio manufacturing for strategic independence. Now look at this if India has to depend on any other country for strategic medicines then if our soldiers are injured and if there is a, a war we will not be able to procure them so we have to make our pharmaceutical and biotech industry independent of any other country for example right now we depend on china for a lot of raw materials for our medicines and apis that dependence has to be reduced then only we in at the time of war we will uh, we will not run out of medicines and our people will be safe so again that is where you can get into and do more research now again uh, we you can get into ai driven biotech research and defense where you can create ai in biology models to simulate pathogen spread 
predict resistance mutations and you can also help integrate bioinformatics with AI to detect, analyze and respond to bio threats faster. So this is another field where you can get in. Now you can also get into forensic biotechnology, DNA fingerprinting, microbial forensics, environmental defense, bioremediation, agri-biotech so that soldiers are provided with superfoods. Again, food technology is one direction where you can go. Now the question is, how do you get started, right? So of course, I gave you a lot of energy that yes, motivation, I want to do something for our country using my biotech skills, but where do you go? See, you have to start with scratch, BSc or MSc in biotechnology, then do some temporary projects in defense colleges, defense establishments such as Armed Forces Medical College, uh, Department of Research and Development, DRDO, then BIRAC, DBT, all these are working to integrate biotech into defense. And you can also go ahead and start your own biotech company which can create super suits or nutrition driven suits or anything, any food tech related or health tech related uh, device, biomedical device, which will help enhance the efficiency and health of soldiers. So that is where you can become an entrepreneur and contribute towards the nation also, just like my friend at FibroHeal. Mr. Vivek Mishra, who is the founder, has already done it. Now it's your uh, chance, your opportunity to do it for your country. Now you can get into indigenous vaccine development, for example, for COVID or any such future vaccines, mRNA technology, you can learn. Do partnership with BioNTech startups to, uh, to create drone deployable biosensors. And then you could uh, get into rapid diagnostic testing, field testing of biotech based rapid diagnostic uh, kits at borders. Also, you could help and the soldiers prepare better for the environment in the hilly areas. So there are a lot which can be done in, uh, using your biotech skills. But the question is now, who would get started? And the answer to this would be anyone who is interested, who is passionate, who believes in his or her skill and wants to contribute towards the nation. Remember, it's not always about money. The soldiers who died on the front never thought they can be a billionaire, but they definitely thought that if they stand today, somebody back home will sleep peacefully, which was all of us. So it's important to contribute towards the nation. It is not uh, necessary that we attack, but it is always necessary to defend, right? And we have to always make sure that we are ready for future threats and bio warfare is a constant future threat you can see terrorists don't have any religion they don't have any ethics or morality if they get hold of any bio warfare a uh, biochemical related uh, agent they will definitely attack india using that so you can contribute by joining these organizations and you can uh, help customize their nutrition supplement detection systems vaccines antidotes decontamination technology biomaterials for the armor smart textiles insect drones portable water purification systems protecting the soldiers from genetic espionage or ai bio defense uh, systems just like we saw the missile uh, anti missile defense system right so a lot has to be done in india a lot has to be done in the world to protect us from some nefarious terrorists who think that they own the world the truth is we all have a piece of our world and we cannot allow it to be destroyed just because somebody chose to be unethical. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope I was able to contribute to your thought process today. Let me know in the comment section how, uh, what is your opinion and how do you think you can contribute towards India's or your country's defense and do you think bio warfare is an important aspect of uh, any country's defense. So please comment below and uh, I'll see you soon in the next one. Till then keep shining. Take care. Bye-bye.